Hello, it's so nice to meet you. How are you? Honestly, I couldn't be better. I am a huge fan of Dairy Girls and I'm not saying this slightly. So thank you so much for taking the time today. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Yeah, no, really. I, I have Dairy Girls quote uh, on my phone. I have the, I'm not being an individual on my own quote. I have the Dairy Girls here. No, here. So oh, really. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh, that's so good. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, they're so cool. I wanted them on my phone. But how do you feel now that the third season is going global? I can't. I'm really excited because I just, um, I just can't wait for the world to see how we've ended it and um, it feels like people have been waiting a long time for it and I hope that they're you know I hope they love it and they're happy with where we leave all the characters but I, I, I feel like I just can't wait for it to be on Netflix now and for people to respond to it you know. Did, were you expecting that the show would go uh, international like that like the you would want an audience all over the world? no way I, I still can't believe it you know I, I I wrote this very specific what I considered quite weird little show about me and my friends um <laughs> and I just thought I thought we're going to probably have a tiny audience that love it so the fact that people around the world are enjoying it are you know messaging me and the cast from Mexico and India and everywhere and saying you know my mom's exactly like Ma Mary. <laughs> it's just like hilarious. But you know, I was thinking we watch American TV so much. Not we're not all Americans, you know. A TV series yeah. about America or about American culture. So why not Irish uh, TV series about dairy? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's now we're we're much more open to that, aren't we? Because of Netflix and um, you know, we want to sort of explore all their all their cultures and you know I think that's that's brilliant that's a really positive thing so it's been great I love that people all over the world are saying my mind's like mom Mary <laughs> because I've been trying to I'm constantly quoting Dairy Girls my mom knows it by heart because of me because she wants to watch the show so and um, she doesn't speak English so uh it's kind of hard for her to read the the, the subtitles because it's way too fast because the characters speak too oh, fast you know goodness, yeah you know sometimes i'm trying to give her some clues about what they meant but you know something just get less in translation don't they i bet yeah i could because even so my husband's english and his parents are english but they have to watch it with the subtitles on because it's too fast for them <laughs> So I can't imagine how your mom, yeah. I had to watch with uh, subtitles first as well, but uh, now I'm good. I can just quote it by heart. <laughs> oh my God, that's brilliant. That's impressive. They are fast, you know, like even for me, sometimes I'm like, we need to slow down a bit. <laughs> I'm in France and I feel like Sister Michael wouldn't appreciate that since uh, she despised <laughs> French. <laughs> oh, my 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 French friend was like, what the hell was that line about? And I was like, I said, it wasn't me, it's Sister Michael. It's not me. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I obviously didn't grow up in Derry, uh, but Derry Goes is honestly the first TV show about teenagers that I really related to. It's realistic, you know, it's, um, I mean, it's not cliches like some TV, I mean, those TV series are great, you know, but sometimes I feel like they kind of hard to, uh, for people to relate to them. Is that why you really wanted to tell that story as well? Is just to create characters that we didn't really find before? I just, I wanted to, to, to write something that felt exactly like you're saying, truthful to what my experience was. And I felt, although I, I really enjoyed lots of television shows about young women, they often focused on them being who they were in love with or sex and having sex for the first time and their body image. And like, while all those things are, you know, true, we also worried about doing well in exams or, yeah. you know, trying to get going to Paris or like all these other things. We, we we're, were more, we were more than that young women, you know, and I, I just, I felt like I hadn't really seen that. And that's mm -hmm. actually what most people respond to. They say, oh, me and my friends were always in trouble. And, we, you know, we were so ridiculous as well. So, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But there's a thing as well. It's because uh, before Dairy Girls, I feel like we, we, we didn't really get to see funny 
young teenage girls characters um I feel like the they they get in, in troubles all the time they do the most ridiculous things and I feel like those kind of parts were given to boys whereas in uh, tv series schoolgirls had more like serious and dramatic roles you know and I feel like yeah. with their girls that completely changed like yes we can be funny thank you <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah and I think it's like they are very um they can be very stupid as well and very sort of you know, they have, they, they're very vain sometimes, they're very small, or, you know, they're sometimes not hugely likable, but because of their, because they're, they are funny, you, you, you do like them, you know, you sort of root for them, and I think it was always the boy show, in, in, in comedy, it was always boys that got into these you know, ridiculous situations, and it, it was sort of, the female characters were playing the the girlfriend to them or you know mm -hmm. someone they were attracted to and I just wanted to really put the girls mm -hmm. front and center and focus on on them because my friends at school my female friends were the funniest the yeah. funniest people I knew you yeah. know exactly I've never had so much fun other than with my girlfriends yeah we, we yeah <laughs> we are funny um but I think why the characters are so so adored uh, around the world it's because they're really not as you said over uh, romanticized or just toned down you know uh or softened because whoever you know just doesn't like that so yeah. um but as a and I, we wouldn't want that to change obviously but as a writer in that industry have you ever felt like you needed to change the characters like for example michelle who's a is so real you know so yeah. so have you ever felt the need to change that uh, it was suggested that she should be softened and uh, you know, I I just really didn't want that and didn't do that. And it's that's not truth. I know I grew up with Michelle's. You know, I know a number of of Michelle's. They are re they're real girls, and um, I felt very strongly that she you know she can be an absolute asshole at times, but that is who she is, <laughs> and that's funny and that's okay. So I I just wouldn't do that really um, because I I felt that sort of sexist. Do you know like. <laughs> Yeah. So no, that that was suggested about about her and, and and in different shows I've written as well. I've I've gotten I've gotten notes like that. Like this female character is not likable, and it's like well, I don't care. She's funny. <laughs> she is. We probably wouldn't ask that for a, a male character. So that's no. true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. How long did you work on the project of Dairy Girls before uh, it was released? How many versions of the show did you have in your mind? Um, it was, it's the, the, the most difficult script to write. And it, for me, it's always the most difficult as was the first one, the pilot, because I always knew what the show was going to be about, I guess, but it was the tone and how far to take the comedy and how silly it was going to be. And, you know, all that took lots of working out. Once I'd done that, it, it was much quicker, but that pilot episode probably took a year to, you know, I would put it away and come back to it, like not a whole year of me sitting tapping on the, but like it, it took a long time to get the tone right. And once I could see the show and I knew what it sounded like and um, it just clicked then and it was it was there and I know you said before that uh, most of the characters were inspired not exactly characters in real life but inspired by people you knew how much of yourself of um, of your family of your friends have you put in these characters I tend to so they're they're bits and pieces in all of them of people I know but it, it'll usually be I take one quality of a friend that I find hilarious because comedy is not real, you, you have to push it and you have to exaggerate it. So I take one funny, like I have a friend like Michelle, who's very sweary and, you know, so I, I take, but she's a lot of other things too, you know, but I'll take yeah. that quality and just exaggerate it. And um, yeah, so what I, I use, I'll, I'll use pieces of, of, um, of people I know and Sister Michael's like a combination of every nun that taught me. They were all just these scary, people so um things like that they're sort of composite characters really you know um but inspired by a quality that someone I know will have mm -hmm. yeah but sister Michael it's funny you should say that because I was going to say sister Michael's so unconventional uh, I mean 
not exactly the image I would have of a nun in my head. Uh, I know my yeah. grandmother she, uh, went to school with nuns. They weren't exactly like Sister Michael. They were pretty harsh uh, and not super nice. And I feel um, like Sister yeah. Michael, yeah, she's kind of cold at first, but she re she's really there for her students and for the girls. And she's so funny. Yeah, I, I think she, she, she doesn't like to admit it, but she really cares about them. She and does, I, yeah. I also remember when I was writing Sister Michael and I like to find one line that describes every character, you know, just one line. And I go, that's them. And I remember when I was coming up with Sister Michael, I I thought she's tired of everything. So she's just she's done. Every, she walks into a room and she's already tired of the conversation. And that seemed to really help me write her. So when I'm writing that character, I would just go get into that mindset where she's just bored and over everything and tired. Um, and that really helped, you know. How is it when you go back to Derry? Uh, are people generally happy with uh, how the show turned out and uh, what it says about Derry at that time? It couldn't have gone better, really. You know, in the, we have a big 30 foot mural in the center of the town of the characters and they do Derry Girls tours you know of the city of the filming locations there's dairy girls afternoon teas where you get you know cream horns and i don't know if you remember <laughs> one episode they do all that it's it's really like boosted tourism in the city so they're very proud of it and and it's just lovely to go home now and thank goodness because dairy is a place where if they don't like someone something they tell you so i i, I couldn't have gone home if they if they hadn't have liked it really but it's great <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing you get so many tourists now i've never been to ireland or northern ireland uh it's a dream i didn't know where to start from, so i feel like now i should start by uh with dairy yeah it's great really? and um Northern Ireland's great you know I, I actually love in Belfast now I was in London for a long time but um yeah it's 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 you have a lot of fun you should definitely come <laughs> <laughs> um and I will visit every single place uh we see in Dairy Girls yeah um season three it feels very funny and very hilarious but I feel like this time we really get like since it's coming to an end uh we talk about Michelle's brother we didn't know that before, which is a heavy topic. And uh, we also have such an amazing cameo with uh, Liam Neeson. Uh, his presence in the booth uh, at the moment he's uh, voting. Uh, we can see how affected he is by this vote. And Liam Neeson spoke about uh, the, the troubles before uh, and how traumatic it was for him. So I was yeah. wondering if you were nervous of this change of tone. I was very nervous about that Michelle storyline and all of that episode, I knew it's, it was what I wanted to do, but I just felt it's so sensitive still, you know, it really wasn't that long ago. And um, I, I, I was very concerned about walking the right side of that line, you know, I was hugely nervous about that. Um, but I think there was a real opportunity with the Good Friday Agreement vote and with the kids reaching 18, the troubles had always been in the background just to bring them front and center and for them to um for them to come face to face with something they'd been protected from their whole lives you know i just thought i have to do this this is where the story is going uh and you know luckily everyone in Derry and northern ireland were were very happy with what we did um which was my main concern that that mm -hmm. that I didn't want anyone to feel it was disrespectful or, you know, because it is a sitcom, it's quite, it's quite big stuff for a sitcom to deal with, I guess, but uh, I was very happy we did, we, we did it, you know. And I know you said before that uh, you really wanted to show that um, funny side of Northern Ireland during the Troubles, because it's always uh, in movies and series, even though they're, they're probably very great and, and they're realistic. It's always very dark. And uh, I was wondering how much of that comedy that we get in Dairy Girls was uh, drawn from a real life experience for you. I, th I think like when, weirdly like, because I was a writer and even when I was a child, I, knew, I probably, you know, I'm going to go on to be a writer. You start to notice stuff maybe that all our people, it, I, I started thinking, or that's funny that you know or that or that's and I didn't really know what I was going to do with that idea that, that that this is all so funny 
Um, mm -hmm. But I definitely noticed certain things and there were so many moments of just ridiculous, hilarious <laughs> things and these and, and these weird situations, it should be quite dark because that's what life is like, isn't it? You know, you can only stay serious and terrified for so long. You have to then just get on with things. Um, but I remember like so many things, like I, I remember, and I've said this in an interview before, when the British army were outside your house, the equipment they wore would interfere with the signal on your TV. So if, if my parents were watching something they wanted to watch, they really were desperate to watch, they would have sent me out when I was like seven and said to the soldier to move down a bit so his equipment doesn't make our TV go funny. And it's like, that's not normal. <laughs> it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely something, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so many things. So it was a very surreal um experience but we weren't really aware of how serene it was and yeah at the time. do you know what happens to the girls uh because the end of season three is kind of uh, i mean it's open they just voted and then you know life goes on uh did erin uh, became a writer did michelle meet with her brother again did james and erin you know give their relationship a try yeah did they find their way in life can we expect to see them again? I think James and Aaron will end up together, but it won't be for a long time. You know, when they're when they're much older, I think yeah. they'll they'll come, you know, back together. I always imagine like in their thirties they'll get together, um, and then I think I know what they're all doing for a living. You know, and I know like Aaron's a novelist, and I think Orla's like managing some weird sports team, like the Mighty Ducks. I think Michelle's a DJ. And I think James is making documentaries about Northern Ireland and Claire yes. like a top barrister, just real top of her game, you know. So like, yeah, I, I, I feel like I always knew what they were going to go on to be. And I needed to know they were all going to be OK in my head, at least. And I don't know if we'll see them again. I, I'm I'm working on some new stuff now, new new shows completely different but you never know I guess in the future um you never know but I, I feel like we left them in a really good place we did we did maybe maybe in the 30s yeah <laughs> that would be nice I cried a lot during that last episode uh especially the last oh. 30 seconds uh that I mean there were a lot of great cameos in that uh season three but the final cameo of Chelsea Clinton it was just I thought how <laughs> Can it be more perfect than that? I don't know, uh, honestly. Yeah. I was feeling so nostalgic at that moment. What's the story behind this cameo? How did you get Chelsea Clinton to do it? It's insane. So I said, so I wrote the final scene, which was the voting scene. And then sort of as a joke for my producers, I wrote the Chelsea Clinton thing and just for a joke. And then we started going, maybe this, should we try and make it happen? So we started like, I started contacting people on like going into people's DMs on Twitter, like American politicians and stuff. And just like saying, do you know the Clintons? Like all this, like really not professional. And um, then somehow we got, we got, oh, Jamie Lee, the actor in the show, Jamie Lee, her manager knew Hillary or had worked with Hillary. And oh. so we, we got the material in front of her eventually that when we made that connection but um it was a lot of just I felt like one of the dairy girls at that time like just chaos just trying to figure it out but um and she was so lovely you know she was just like yeah she likes the show um and she she was game she was up she wanted to do it so it was a lot of fun wow that is uh that is a story for the record and your husband was also a part of the cameos this uh this season yeah. how fun was that for you that was great. Yeah, that was, that was, it was just so stupid because the part he plays is so ridiculous. Um, but yeah, he said to me, the one thing he didn't want to do in the show was dance. He doesn't really like dancing. And then the whole thing, I didn't feel like he, he just is dancing the whole time. And so that was quite funny. <laughs> You're my husband, so do it. <laughs> just do it if you love me. You, I know you shared on Twitter some storyline ideas that didn't make the show, one of them being a new 
original version of uh, Romeo and Juliet by Erin <laughs> Quinn herself. Uh, are there many story ideas that didn't make the cut? Maybe you should publish, I feel like you should publish a collection of all the ideas uh, that didn't make the final show. Because there's some like that I found, I thought were our funny. But we just could because they didn't fit the story. And, you know, you can sometimes if something's really funny, you can sneak it in somehow. But sometimes it just feels like it's not a natural fit, even if the set piece itself is very funny. But there is one where they were learning um, first aid and I loved it. It was just they were so bad at learning first aid and it, it just really got out of hand. But I had nowhere for that storyline to go ultimately because it, it all needs to tie in. Um, so that was probably my favorite one that um, that doesn't get that doesn't get used because mm -hmm. they Michelle not you know practicing first aid on James. I just thought was one of the because she basically ends up almost killing him you know instead of like practicing for it properly so it was just like really a really chaotic scene that we had to lose yeah I would think that Michelle would just like James the eye and not yeah you know, exactly that was kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like you know he's saying it's just, it doesn't matter <laughs> um but I know you said also that Nicola Quitman couldn't uh, make uh, as much time on the third season because of uh, scheduled conflicts. Uh, she was filming Bridgerton. How was that for you to just reunite on the red carpet that night? You know, COVID happened and then schedules got in the way as well. And then you just reunite on the red carpet uh, for the premiere. Yeah, it was like, well, it was, it was um, really tricky that because at one point there was so much stuff going on with COVID. And at one point we had, I had, sorry, three different versions of the show in my head because there were so many things going on. So mm -hmm. it was actually quite a stressful shoot because um, you were always thinking COVID's going to shut down production or so they actually get there and get it, you know, made and to be really proud of it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we, you know, Nicola's moments, Nicola's storylines in it are brilliant and she's just so fantastic. You know, you can you can put her in a room on her own and she's hilarious. So it, it luckily it all, it all kind of worked out, but there were definitely moments where it was like, this is incredibly difficult <laughs> because um, we had, we had pushed because of COVID and shows were shutting down all the time, but thank goodness we, you know, we got there. Is there, has there ever been a moment where everybody was laughing so hard that it was just impossible to shoot because I feel like when we watch it, we're obviously laughing so much, but filming it must be must be very hard as well. Yeah, there's um, there's it's all there's a scene. It's always the same character for me, um, Uncle Colum, and there's a scene in the in the final series where he has a breadstick and he's yeah. passing the breadstick. That was really difficult because. It, he's just so funny but they there were so many different ways they that Jerry broke the bread like it was so hard to choose which one of Jerry's performances we would go with um and and but the the worst ever it was in series one when Uncle Colum comes around and has has fish and chips with them at the table and um he's he's talking about when he got hijacked people were laughing that hard it's a big table of characters that Mike, our director, had to remove everyone and just <laughs> film that actor on his own and then bring them all back in because the table was shaken. Because he's <laughs> so, his voice is so boring that it's like really hard. It's really, it's just like, I don't know. And I, I normally never laugh because I, I don't really find it funny because I've written it and but even <laughs> I like getting told off and asked to, I had to walk out as well he is so funny so for me um him or the two and and Sarah and Ma Mary can be just insane as well sometimes because they've got such good chemistry and they yeah they 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 really crack me up as well yeah sometimes it was it was difficult <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, Sarah is definitely, she's definitely something. She is, uh, she's one of my favorite characters, honestly. I mean, they're all my favorite characters. What am I oh. saying? It's like choosing your own children. You can't. You just you love, you love them all, right? Oh, thank you so much.